video, we're going to take the 2D tracked information that we used in the previous video and we're going to run it through the camera solver. The camera solver is there to take all the 2D information and turn it into a 3D camera and 3D space within PF Track. We're also going to see how we can orient the scene after the proper solution. So before we continue forward with the camera solution, we need to fetch the information from the other track straight into the user track. Now because the other track comes before the user track, it will be very easy to just click on the fetch and it's going to ask me which one of these trackers I need to bring into the user track. I'm just going to click on all. And now what we can do is close this window and under the user track, we're going to go and add our camera solver. So if I go into the node panel and under the solving, I'm going to take the regular camera solver and just add it to the user track. So the focal length is being read straight through the estimate focal and now we can click on the solve all. We can see that the majority of the trackers is green. We have a little bit of yellow and a couple of trackers that are red. So if I go to the error tab and I click on fit view, I see which one of those trackers is giving me some residual errors. So if I select this one, I can go into the trackers tab and deactivate. If I click on fit view, I see that I still have some trackers that have residual errors. What I can do is also select the trimming and lower the trimming to about one. And now I can click on refine all. Another way to check the camera solution is to go into the curve editor and take a look at the curves themselves, making sure that you don't have any kind of unnecessary spikes in the translation on the X, Y, and Z and the rotation. Rotation might be a little bit more noisy due to the fact that this was a handheld camera, but it seems that the graphs themselves are pretty clean. So it's safe to say that the camera was solved properly. So let's go back to the tree view. And now under the camera solver, under the utilities category, we can select the orient scene. So I'm going to take this box and just pin it over here. This point is going to be pinned right over there, here, and then right over there. So I'm getting it as close as I can to where I think the perspective should be. But working with the box, you'll notice that the horizontal line does not match with the horizontal line that I have in the footage. So the next stage would be to actually take the box and change this method to the rotation. But before I do that, I do want to set up an origin point. So I'm going to select my marquee tool, get this tracker, which is the first manual tracker that I put and click on set origin. Now I can use my rotation tool in order to rotate my camera and the point cloud within the 3D space to the proper perspectives. So I'm going to rotate a bit around the X and then a bit around the Z and I'm going to fix my scene here and use the horizontal line as a guide and a bit of rotation on the Y wouldn't hurt. And the next step would be to take the edit mode and move it to none. So there wouldn't be any kind of accidental movements on the Orient C node. The last step before exporting would be to take this scene and add a couple of test objects in order to see if our solution was a correct one and if the perspective actually matches to the perspective that I have in the footage. So we saw how with the camera solve node, we can take the 2D information and turn it into a 3D scene that includes a 3D camera. We also saw how to use the error tab within that node in order to fix the errors that we got from the footage. We also use the orient scene node in order to give the scene its proper perspective. And in the next video, we will see how to use test objects and also how to export.